Hello, this is Trina B with Girl Let's Talk Atlanta. Tonight we are speaking with Patrice E. Evans. Hi, Patrice. How are you? Hey, how you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So can we first um, start off by allowing, I'm going to first <laughs> allow you to introduce yourself. Like, who are you? You know, where are you from? And, you know, how did you get to be where you are right now? Well, thank you for having me, first of all. This is exciting. I love being here. Well, my name is Patricia Evans. I'm originally from New York City, Washington Heights. Some people say, is that Harlem? I'm like, no, actually it's right above Harlem and a very multicultural, a um, little older than I look. So back in the day, it was just like a African-American and Irish, some Jewish, but then it turned to a Hispanic neighborhood, it's multicultural, and it really shaped who I am today. It shaped a lot later, like if you ask me later about my dance and everything, a lot came from that whole upbringing. I didn't even realize it until later. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm kind of unique in the sense that I grew up around Puerto Rican. My best friend was Puerto Rican. Her mother spoke to me in Spanish. I was dancing salsa and merengue, but yet my mother's from the South, so I say y'all. So I just had like, <laughs> I had everything. My mom's from North Carolina, but she raised me in New York City. So I had this eclectic, like, ugh. So I learned about myself in college. I'm like, wait, I'm not just like everybody else. I got a lot going on here. But the biggest thing in Washington Heights was performing arts. So that's a lot of where Lin-Manuel Miranda was, he put us on the map, Washington Heights. And I'm definitely, it, I can see why uh, we ended up getting on the map for performing arts because I was surrounded by it growing up. So it, it really influenced who I am today. <laughs> All right, awesome. So you mentioned dance. Um, how did you get into the dance and what kind of inspired your passion to pursue dance? Well, I, it's just a, a born, a thing I was born to do. Um, from the little, a little, as long as I can remember, I've been a dancer. I and mean, what's been interesting in the dance world is like people, you can be a natural dancer or you can be a trained dancer. Well, I'm both because I took that natural ability. And then later on, I uh, just, well, at seven years old is when I started taking classes, but I never stopped. And I also had acting and dancing like equal, didn't know which way to go. I chose the acting and this is where the Lord comes in. And he's like, no, I want you to dance for me. So I've kind of like, so I'm like, okay, Laura, when am I going to be able to do some acting? Sure, like, I want you to dance. And it turned into a ministry, my act, my dancing. I thought it was my, I thought it was just like my thing that I, for me, you know, and he showed me, no, women will be blessed with this. You need to, and I'm like, wow. So there's a whole, a journey of balancing that world out with what I wanted to do and with my faith. I've been doing that for so many, and now it's all coming together, which is really exciting. Yeah. All right. All right, awesome. So how did you kind of connect the faith with the dancing? Do you do like spiritual dancing, like in your dance moves? Like how is your, your spirituality connected to your dance? Well, thank you for asking. It's a big deal for me. This has been such a journey. It's really starts, the story starts with my grandma. My grandmother was a preacher in North Carolina and mm -hmm. she was the pillar of the community. And she, my, the, my mom was a PK pastor's kid <laughs> and I honestly didn't even realize this until I grew up I'm like was my mom a PK no wonder so she <laughs> so she, we were in New York and you know she was she had like she was like a hippie but really intelligent my father was and we were they, were, they, did, they did sit ins and all that and I took that spiritual side of me I took after my grandma I had no idea how deep of my faith, you know, that I had, but I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior at 15, which if anybody wants to know about the Christian faith, that's how you become a Christian. You ask Jesus in your heart to be a Lord and Savior. And I did that at 15. I had always had a prayer life, according to my aunt, who's also a preacher. And I just always had this close relationship with the Lord. I think my grandma put something on me or something. But at the same time, I had this sensual side of me, and I had, which came through, through my dance. And I was in New York trying to find who I was. I'm like, well, what am I then? Because I look a certain way on the outside. And then, but you sit me down and talk to me, you're going to end up hearing about the Lord. <laughs> so for years, I tried to balance that. I tried to figure out who am I, Lord? And I came up with, my, with all that I learned in school, but then being immersed in like the Hispanic community and learning salsa, merengue, bachata, all that. And then going to college and learning more ca Caribbean dance and all that. I had to figure myself out. I said, Lord, why did you make me look like this and make me like sensual, but also very spiritual? What am I doing with all this? And he basically helped me see that it wasn't for the world. Like in New York, you know, you get producers, you got people going after you, you, know, you got so many things you could be doing. And it was hard for me 
to really know and get that guidance and know what am I supposed to be doing and not the wrong things. And it's been a journey. And that's why I take my journey and God finally showed me, he showed me first through my dance fitness program where I helped women with that. And I had a healthy balance of spirituality and sensuality. I said, I'm an epitome of that. I'm not going to lose either side. Now, my grandmother was kind of legalistic where she used to watch Soul Train. <laughs> she used to be looking at Soul Train like she wished she could dance. I think I ended up finishing what she would have done if the time allowed it because I am both and it's just amazing. And I think I'm, I'm kind of breaking ground here by being that. And because the Lord told me to do it, I'm not, it wasn't my idea. If you want to ask what the Lord said, I want you, I, he told me to dance, but then he later on after having my dance fitness program where I did international dance, cause I was good at it. Even though I have professional dancing, I noticed I was so good at picking up dancers from any country. Like I was a unique type of dancer. And then I said, okay, Lord, I guess you want me to do that. So I did it. And then he, he stopped me at the, my tracks. I did my DVD like he told me to do. I did everything and he says, okay, now I want you to belly dance. The Lord telling me to belly. So then I started thinking about that. I'm like, wait a minute. That's the most ancient form of dance, if you think about it. Biblical times. And when you really think about it, it's really feminine and classy. It should be and beautiful. And I'm like, nobody looks like me doing it. So maybe it's time. <laughs> I'm like, so I start now I get it. I've been going backwards. What happened was the Lord told me I stepped in on faith and figured it out. So to be able to answer your question, it took years for me to just obey and start to get that answer. And now I'm finally in a place where I can explain to you why I think God is telling me to do this. Does that does that make sense? Like it's an amazing story that I'm yes. excited now that I'm in a place I can explain, you know? <laughs> yeah. And we all have that coming to Jesus moment, you know, <laughs> okay? Because I've had plenty of them, okay? <laughs> Let me see. But then when you, when you do what he tells you to do, isn't it? He's right. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, I get it now. Your plan was better than mine. I didn't realize. <laughs> right. Okay. And we tend to see a peak of what God is going to do for us, and we take off with it instead of allowing God to finish giving us the message, finish giving us what we need in order for us to go on. So, like I said, I've been there, done that. Just oh. so long. Okay, wait, maybe I should have waited, or maybe I should have did this, you know, exactly how he told me to do this, exactly. trying to do it my way. <laughs> and if anybody's listening and wants to know what we mean, it's really called walking in the spirit and kind of being in his time. And I think when we really listen to the Lord and we go on his time, he's cooler and more fun and more exciting than people try to pretend he is. He's just colorful. He knows your heart. He put it in for a reason. So it's like, why would God put dance in me? That was my question as a young girl. I was looking at my mom, my grandma, and how she wore dresses all the time, and she didn't do this, and she didn't do that, and I'm like, okay, I'm not supposed to do that. And then I see my mom way on the other end, like, you know, <laughs> just being free, you know, free spirit, flower child, and I'm just like, okay, there's got to be a balance here somewhere, and it's like, you know, maybe we're wrong about what God is. Maybe he made me the way I am with a sensual body and beautiful, but not to use the enemy's way, but he has a plan for it. And it seems like his plan is, of course, for my husband and my, my relationship with that, for loving myself and to bless women. I, I just never, never wrapped around my head that I was going to be a blessing to women, you know, and help them find where they belong. And this, and this whole walk in the spirit is timing. Don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. Don't be going other ways. Just let him. He will tell you, right? And it's so important. As you get older, you start to realize it wasn't worth me rushing to do a little piece of what he said. Just do that part he said. When he's ready for you to take that next one, he'll tell you. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> So um, you talk about um, the performing arts and growing up in a multicultural, um, different areas or whatnot. So you also do acting as well. So tell me about the acting and how did you kind of um, balance being an actor and a dancer as well? I love it all. It's, <laughs> it's my heart. It really is. So the dancing, I, I, I've been trying to think about this for years. I'm like, dancing's just me. It's just oozes through it. I'm not even thinking. It's just me. So that's why I was concerned. I was surprised when God told me to do it. I'm like, oh, but I, you sure? Okay. I thought I did it for me. Acting is just, I think I'm in love with acting. I just decided that I think it's like this, this guy in your life that you just can't get rid of, that you're just so in love with. Like, 
<laughs> acting, I just love it. I just love the art of it. And I enjoy, as you can see, expressing myself in a, in a, on a platform where I can help people see themselves more or, you know, bring them to another level. And, you know, I, I just want to tell you what I um, learned, what I, what the Lord put in my heart about performing arts from the beginning, that if you take, if you go back to the earliest time that we ever danced, sing, act, and all of the performing arts, it came from tribes that did it for, in religious ways, and it was all in one. It was never separated. We started institutionalizing in the Western world, right? And we started calling this acting. And you got to, and this, but when I dance, people have come to me and said, wow, you're so into it. And I'm thinking, well, it's probably the fact that I'm also an actress. Like it's, it's, I don't see it separate anymore. You know, my dancing is so full because I'm really in it and I'm feeling it. My acting is great because I use my body. It's like, it's the Western world that separated that. That was something that you can't do one without the, I believe if you want to, if you're a true artist in that way, you can't really separate the two. You really can't. So I, when I, I can't talk about it forever. It started in high school when my acting teacher and my dance teacher were fighting over me. They were like, okay, she's going to make my department good. No, she's going to. And I remember feeling, as teacher, I, I felt like my acting teacher was letting me be the lead and my dance teacher was playing with his sister. She wanted me to stay there, but she wasn't making it because there was this, this look, I guess. And I think now I'm starting to realize there was more to that possibly that, you know, she loved me, but why won't you, you know? So I chose acting and God chose dancing later on. <laughs> so that whole story. And yes, I've been in film and television and acting. Uh, I mean, um, theater rather. Uh, theater was my first love. And now I've been into uh, film and television. And I've been, that's what's hard to balance is that those genres are kind of different in the ways okay. that Okay, awesome. So can you tell me about some of your roles and like the roles that you take on? Can you see yourself in those actual roles? I know you say you're passionate about both dancing and acting, mm -hmm. but the roles, do you actually like, okay, wow, like I can be this person like every day? Um, just, yeah, when people think about acting, they always think, I have a unique take on acting because people think you're pretending or you whatever. First of all, I used to love playing house when I was little, so it makes sense. <laughs> Playing with dolls and the Barbies. It all makes sense now. But I've been, I've been thinking about that. I'm like, why? I'm, I'm known for being too truthful, right? I've always been known for that. In college, my friends would be like, can you just lie? It's like, you know, just, just try. There's sometimes me, and I just have an issue. So what I said was, I'm like, I'm not going to do the thing wrong then if I have to talk about it. I just, so the thing is, how am I such a good actress if I have a hard time lying, people think acting has to do with lying. It is not that. It really is finding a truthful place. It really is. In other words, you, it's, I've heard actors say it's empathy. So if I was going to play you, I would really spend time with you and learn you and really have empathy for your cause, what's in your heart and what matters to you. I'd look at your, your mannerisms and I would just, it, it just, it's almost like I always say it's dance is like language, but I guess acting similar, I actually begin to really emerge myself into that person. Now, I won't pick it if I don't feel like I can. And as I grow on the Lord, it's harder to pick certain roles that I wouldn't even want to be emerged with. But I literally uh, begin to learn your mannerisms and your ways. And I find the truth in your story, the truth about you. And that's when I will take on that role if i can't find the truth in it and the truth in her pain or the truth in her anger or whatever then you can see it and it's fake and when you think of some people are like i don't know why she's not that good she's all right it's because she's not really believing in herself whether you're a villain or you're the good guy you have to believe in their point of view and their story and that's the true answer to to being a successful actress and that's what i love about acting the truth is telling people stories and uplifting people and helping them come to a place to see that truth and that that's a big answer but that's what i love about acting that's what i love about it <laughs> yes yes so well, that's awesome and amazing i try to do some acting myself um <laughs> i'm one of I've been always a big fan of the arts, of the culture, um, of everything. Like throughout elementary, middle, and high school, I've just been like a creative, whether I was writing, whether I was a part of the dance team, whether I was part of the poetry club, um, orchestra, drafting, design, like all kinds of stuff, you name it. Um, so it's just amazing to, you know, see other women who are creatives as well. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask you, what do you feel about, um, female empowerment and feminism? 
Oh, thank you for asking. Well, that's my ministry. It's, uh, I have a unique uh, angle that I go on, but that's what God has figured out. I figured out God was doing with me. Um, while the world wants to degrade a woman's beauty, this is, I'm gonna, this is what I'm led to, talk, to focus on with that answer, because I can talk about a lot about my ministry. But what I, based on my experience, how God turned the negative into a positive, being in a, could you imagine being in a big city like New York City? Growing up, cute, cute little figure, trying to find your way and everything. The world loves, and the enemy and the darkness in the world will love to degrade a woman's beauty and her sensuality and her beauty, and in particular, an African-American woman with her beauty and this uniqueness that we have. And what God showed me is, that's not why I made that beauty. Don't believe that lie. It is not about degrading it. It is not about exposing it. It is not about um, trying to show it off in the negative way. I made you like a flower. You are beautiful. All your curves, no matter how big, small, how you look. And I want that to be, I want first for you to love that about yourself. I want you to unlock your joy is what I do. I unlock a woman's joy. You know, and my goal is to unlock anyone's joy, but my thing is a woman's joy. Because once she's joyful and she understands her beauty and her sensuality in the right place and her spirituality in the right place, then she can glow the way she was meant to glow. I know that's like a really deep answer, but that's really in my life how God showed me first. And now I can share with other women. You'll see them with, they, we got this strong face sometimes, but there's something a lot that's really hurt tight inside. We've either had some serious, I don't know how serious we can go on the channel, but some people have had daybreak. They've had like real serious stuff go, you know what I mean? That's more common than we want to admit. And it messes with your self-esteem and you think about what did I do wrong or what's wrong with me? Or maybe I need to be, you know? And what God is revealing to me is no, I'm the one that you're doing this for. You're the one we're doing this for. Heal you first, love you first, and then I'm gonna give you the right person to love you. And then you can pass this torch on to more beautiful women, young girls, you know? So femininity, uh, and I, I believe you said, it means the world. There's a power in it. And if we use it properly and we do it in the right way, we can glorify the Lord in it. And in the church and some in the body of Christ, sometimes we don't realize that there's nothing wrong with our curves. There's nothing wrong. God made that. He just wanted us to use it properly in a way that, right? Would you agree that it's not that we don't want to, even the Bible says, the Bible didn't say you can't drink a glass of wine. He just said, don't be drunk with it. So we got to be careful to say you can't look cute or you can't be proud of your beauty. Just It's the way you use it. Right. Right? Wouldn't you agree? And that means a, the world to me with women is that I don't want you hiding your beauty. I want you to find the right way to, to celebrate it. Otherwise, let's cover every rose out there, every beautiful flower. Exactly. Exactly. Like, like a flower. I t and in the, by the same token, whenever there's a man around and they got the wrong impression when I'm dancing, or whatever, I'm like, you need to learn also how to see us. Rethink how you see a beautiful yeah. woman because it's supposed to be like the flower, the way you see a rose, very delicate and beautiful and should be done the right way. And from that place, I think marriages will start right. Relationships will start. You're not, we will respect ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. And still love the Lord. And still, and I, right? I think that. Um, I guess like the stereotypes that you know that's out there and the way that people just look at women not only just women but black women you know our features um how they glorify us for different things um mm -hmm. and, you know I think that plays a role into how they look at us like when they see us and that's one thing about me being a woman being a black woman I love to express my feminine side I love to look good I love to play my part um, you know, but I also know my stuff as well. I'm educated. I'm motivated. Um, I'm determined. I'm all of those things. But when people see, you know, people will be like, okay, so what do you do? You know, so they wouldn't know. But yeah, definitely respecting um, who we are and what we can do in our um, in our creativity space as well. <laughs> yeah, I feel like having some more of you, more of me, more of us showing them, you know, like First Lady, um, Michelle Obama, I'm like, she probably paved the way in a lot of ways because she showed how we can be beautiful. I think she has her own sex appeal. You know what I mean? She can be poised and have fun. She's fun. So I think that did help us a lot, you know, to start that having our mayor, you know, Keisha Bonds, having more women 
um, in their circle of influence showing I'm not afraid to put them earrings on. And yes, I got some beautiful lips. I got some big, pretty hair. And it's okay. This is how it was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. you see me dancing with my belly dance. I love to hear a sister say, I didn't know. I've never seen us, you know, doing belly dance. And, you know, I see what God's doing. That's one of the areas where they put us on a pedestal. Belly dance is where you put beauty on a mm. pedestal. And hair is it glorified. But my hair doesn't look like that. And it's so pretty and it's okay. So if this is the, pin the pinnacle of what beauty is, then let me just show you this, this beauty here because, you know, you just, the more we show ourselves, the more their eyes will get used to this and they'll see we could be fun, we could be smart, you know exactly. what I mean? And still love the Lord. Yes, <laughs> yes, always put him first regardless. Um, yeah. But you talk about your YouTube channel. So I wanted to talk about like, how was it like putting your YouTube channel together because I know everybody and they mama at the <laughs> want to do a YouTube page and a YouTube channel. So how, what was the process like when you putting that together? I started off when uh, YouTube was going through, it wasn't around now, but it was like, I think 2014 is when I actually, or 13, <clears throat> I was actually, let me see if I have my DVD. I was, I was in that place where the Lord told me to do a DVD, to start my dance classes and, you know, to do that. And I was in an obedient state. I had that, that pivotal moment in my life where I was saved. But then there was a point where I said, Lord, I give my life to you. What do you want? And he was telling me to do that. So I did it. And somebody was like, you don't even have a channel yet. How is that going to work? Well, the Lord didn't tell me to do that. So I'm just going to do this. And when he told me to do it, I will. He just said, he let me know when to do it. I put my dance fitness program up there first to promote it. And everybody was loving it. And then at one point, I just shared my... Uh, hair journey and everybody went nuts they were like what and so i took my weave out and i had the short hair and they loved my journey and i just started keeping it real sharing my journey doing these things and evolved into keeping the dance there the fitness the belly dancing and they just love it and they just stayed with me and as things changed with youtube i just stuck in there you know i knew it wasn't it was getting tough but you just got to stay it's a long haul with youtube you really have to stick with it and be consistent and don't write a check. I always say, don't write a check you can't cash. So don't come in there trying to be somebody that you can't keep being for years to come. So that was my thing. Exactly, exactly. So you pretty much, you have your own business and you've been around different business owners and businesses. Um, so what do you think it is, um, what do you think is essential for us as black business owners to be successful as black business owners? That's a good question. Uh, first of all, business is so, it's not an easy thing in and of itself. Um, I guess with, other than the fact that, like we just said, walk in the spirit, make sure, you know, make sure the Lord's telling you to do it. He's going to anoint it. He's going to bless it. So that's a, that's a no brainer, you know, and just in case someone's wondering what I mean by Jesus, you know, I, I cover everything with Jesus at the center of everything I do. And I'm always staying in prayer and I, I'm old enough to say, okay, I've been doing, I'm a, I've had a lot of things on my resume, but it, I got to a place where it's like, I can't do this. So I just let go. So the first step is definitely, if you are a follower of Christ, if you're not, that would be, be true to yourself. But, uh, you know, first find out, what do you want me to do, Lord? And, and a lot of times, and I don't know who our audience is, but uh, as African-American people, we are so multifaceted. We have so many people in our, in our, as our ancestors. We are just very talented in so many ways. So the, bad, the good side of that is that look at all the inventions we've done, all the things we've done, and all the amazing things. But on the other side, it's like, okay, which one do I pick? I mean... Right. How I, start. I could do so many things. So I thought about that recently. I was like, we are brilliant. We have so many, you know, the heart and lung um, machine we created. Like there's so many things. I'm like, wait, is it possible that we're very brilliant? And when we're starting off, that's a problem sometimes. Cause it has been, have you, can you relate? So yeah. is that a thing we need to be talking about about in our culture? It's the opposite of the lies they've said about us. We're actually brilliant. And maybe it's jealousy that's keeping people away. Don't let me not go there. I mean, not... <laughs> all right, that's another interview, right? Okay. We'll talk about that another time. But anyway, um, when we're starting as African American people, we just have to remember you're probably multifaceted. So yeah. what happens is you really do have to ask the Lord, okay, which one Lord this season anyway. And then from there, you need to get, make sure that you, I said this with my dance, make sure that you know your genre, you know your area, you know what you're doing. Make sure he's in it, he will pave the way and open up. Get to know your, and you probably already know this, get to know your, your um, 
your, the people in your space, get to know your space. As I started getting into hair space, I mean, I was naturally just watching the videos because I was desperately trying to figure it out. I know my space. I know it very well. I know the dance fitness space very well. I know the Lord. So I know what's needed. I know, and this is huge, and I know you've heard, where's the gap? Where's the place where no one's talking about that thing or no one's addressing that thing? Usually God can show you that, but that's what he's done with me. I'm carving out. I'm the Caribbean fusion belly dancer. No one... <laughs> doing that. I didn't come up with it. God did. And especially the, the Caribbean fusion belly dancing minister. No, I was doing that. But you know, God did that. He, he knows that that was an, an area that was a need. So you're looking for a need. And once you know your place and you listening, you're like, nobody's talking about this. How can nobody's, wait a minute. Well, I'm going to do it. And then when you do that, be wise about where you want to go with your business. And what I've done is just to give some tips to anyone out there to use today's social media. When you're on whatever platform you use, get them off the platform into your own email list and begin to work that way. Would you agree that, mm -hmm. you know, get them to be a part of your own community? Some people use Facebook. Start to create a community. Start to be consistent. Show them. People want to know you're going to be who you are, you know? Right. So that's the only way you can show up being you every being the same every day is to be you every day. Right. right? And so people need consistency. I was a certified teacher. People want to know what they're going to get. They know what the brand they're getting when they get mm -hmm. on you. And so always deliver that, you know, but don't lock yourself in so tight that you can't ever come out. Start from the beginning. From the beginning with my hair thing, I said to everybody, I said, listen, let me tell y'all, I'm going to my hair and I'm not using a lot of products. I know all these other people use a lot of products. I'm a dance fitness person. I'm not a hair person. So don't even ask. Like I, I went against the grain from the beginning and I think I'm still standing. And a lot of people had to start their channels over because they wanted to be like me. They're like, oh, I'm so, I can't believe you talk about God. I'm like, yep. I mean, you don't have to be on my channel. Right. right? And another thing is quality versus quantity. You might grow a little slower when you're authentic, but it's so much more powerful and you have a real community and it's so much worth it when you when you know those people are there for you it's not right. just passing by so those are the best pieces of advice i can give you know what i mean instead of technical things you can always find technical things online but just you know what i'm saying i think i'm giving the right answer in terms of business because right now you need social media with your business so i would say definitely use that tool and get people from that tool to sell whatever you're trying to sell talk to them and get their advice on what they want keep a connection with your community. It's all about the community these days. It is, it, it is. And definitely have your own tribe or your yes. own pick or whatnot. Um, as that's how you can seem to grow because the more and more people that you have, like really just focus in on you and actually paying attention to what you do, they get to understand and feel you a lot more. And then that is when, you know, they share and things yes. like that. So mm -hmm. you yourself definitely pays off. Um, and I love to, you know, feel those great energies, those great vibes of real people, you know, genuine people who are not, you know, overacting or over, you know, being, you know, overly dramatic. And, you know, like you said, you, you try to, you introduce people into a vibe that you can't handle all the time that you no. can't be. Just for the numbers. Just for the yeah. numbers. When you get yeah. high, I've seen people get high and say, I'm, I'm stopping my channel. I'm having a burnout. And this all over again. I mean, I've been seeing it for years. And my wow. biggest advice, start off real. Let it yeah. grow slow. And that's yeah. not slow. Those are your real followers. Right. Keep it up in the beginning. They can feel it. They know who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, you will, I think, honestly, I think that's a good way to know what people love about you and what you can even sell mm -hmm. based on the things they keep asking for. And that, that might help you find out. What is it that they love about me that I'm going to, I didn't plan on selling my natural hair product line, like my growth oils and all that stuff. I have growth oil and everything. And they just asked me, they, Ayurveda Curls is what it is now. But I, that wasn't a plan. That was something they were like, can you make it for us? I was like, um, oh, I guess. And I prayed about it, of course. And then I said, Lord, just show me how to do it. And I did it. And it just happened from them asking. And I'm sure you've experienced that, right? You knew more about what you were offering based on what they were saying, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's like, and then you go to talk about like many talents and having many, many talents, you know, when you put those talents out, when you put those talents out and introduce your talents to um, the world, you know, that's when you can see like um, what talent, you know, actually is for you, which one can you use to you know, connect with your audience more better. So I agree. that, uh, I'll give you one second. Put this mm -hmm. chart. 
No, but I totally think, you know, starting off, if anyone's starting off and they think, see, back in the day, we used to get a product and push it on people, you know? And, you know, my husband's into marketing. He said, you know, things have changed. It has shifted. We don't do the product and push it on them. We go out, create the community and say, what do y'all want? You have to. And yeah. you, you can also say things, let me give you another tip, which I haven't really had to use, but this could be somebody, pre-order. If they give you the money ahead of time, say, if you guys want this, I'm doing pre-orders, that tells you they're gonna pay for your products. So as a businesswoman using social media, it's very smart, create your, create your community and listen to them and deliver. I'm big on deliverance, delivering, because if somebody hired me to dance and they want that Caribbean dance, I'm gonna deliver. If they want that hair product, line, I'm deliver. Make sure you deliver, because let me tell you something about social media. The word will get out. If you don't, <laughs> wouldn't you agree? <laughs> it will, definitely will. Um, so I want to ask you, you talk about your husband. Uh, I didn't hear if you had any kids uh, or not, but I wanted to know if you had kids and with your husband, how do you kind of balance and juggle, um, you know, your businesses and your, your time for your family as well? Thank you, Preston. You know, no one's asked me that yet. I have a multicultural family, which I'd love to highlight. <clears throat> really multicultural. And I am, and if you want to hear more about that, let me know. But I am a lot older than I look. I decided, I decided the year that I was turning 50, I would tell everybody. So this is the year. Look at you, looking good, the glow. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I light on you got big <laughs> good. I look, you look beautiful, beautiful glow. Um, uh, really yeah, so this is the year, God willing, that I'm supposed to be turning 50. So that being said, wow. I can answer the question a little differently. I don't have little ones. I have young adults. Wow. I have grandchildren. I have two grandchildren. Oh, my God. Yeah. It is. <laughs> so I know it's, it's crazy that people don't believe my age, but that's part of being a woman of color as well. It comes with that, too. It does come with that. Don't um, crack. Don't crack, man. <laughs> this is what I do sometimes. Just a little side thing. I be, like, feeling all special because I look young and everything. Then I go in a room full of sisters, and I'm like, I'm not special anymore. We all look young. <laughs> we all look young with that for our age. So it's like when I'm not when I'm like out doing something, they're like, oh, you look so young. But as soon as I get into like church and everybody's in, in the room, all of us, I'm like, we all look young. I don't know. Right. Yeah. It's just us. Yeah, we look young for our age. And if we take care of ourselves and dance, we just look a little bit younger. Dancing helps. But yeah, I manage my life when I had them at home, like my son's still with me. He's a movie maker animator um when i had them at home the way i balanced was this goes back to your feminine woman the thing about women i strongly believe that a woman should keep carve out her space even with the little ones you can do a little bit and i tell my daughter now you need to now she gets it she gets it she didn't get it before why well, i had that dance fitness program i my goal with that class was like you got to give yourself this hour you can give yourself one hour with me and I want you to leave everything out the door and we're going to have a good time. And they love my class because they got to truly turn off their mind for an hour. That sounds, if anyone out there is not a mother and you're like, well, I don't get that. My daughter didn't either. But when you become a mom, that is like sacred. They fell in love with my class because of that. And now I do that on my, um, my YouTube channel. I do a live stream at 11 a.m., by the way, if you want to join. But it's a little, it's not as long, but it's the same concept. I believe young moms, mothers, women, you must carve out your time even if it's your meditation time we get lost in family and i obviously i'm naturally in my flesh would be like all about family me last but i had to learn the hard way that i didn't i saw a lot of moms losing themselves when they were empty nesting and i was like i don't want to be that i don't want to be so connected to them that they can't breathe they can't decide on who they are i'm telling them what to be and when they leave i fall apart I don't have a purpose anymore. So they were always a part of any business I did. I actually had them helping me with my businesses, if ever. I wanted them to see a strong mom that was balancing things. And I had a rough time in my life where things were rough and I still stepped out and showed them, especially my daughter, I wanted her to see, you can balance this. Just find a way, you gotta keep you alive no matter what, or what happens when they leave? You're not gonna want them to leave. You're, not, you're gonna be one of those moms that, that keep your kids from growing because you living through them. So the answer is, I did that and it's working. My, mo my daughter actually, she just, she, I, she's in another country. 
So thank God I do have my own life. She moved to another country, so I have to deal with that. But she she comes on my stuff, and she she's actually being blessed by my ministry. She gets it. She's actually working out with a newborn. I'm like, she's doing more is caught than taught. So when you do it, they remember that. And she's doing that with her children. So it's just, you got to keep yourself intact. They say in the airplane, put your mask on first. I'm a strong believer in that. You can't be there for anybody else. If you're not, and it doesn't just mean getting your nails done and looking good on the outside. I'm talking about, and this is my thing, especially my heart, you know, of course, is with African-American women because I know how it is to be one. We're good at looking good, smiling, even when things are falling apart. I'm talking about crying in that pillow. Let yourself cry journal um build yourself back up talk to a sister don't pretend it's not there let's talk about it and get ourselves back to that pretty place but not pretend right and i believe that the bible says in your weakness your strength is made perfect i decided that i was going to take that on and if you're not african-american woman you're listening you're wondering why am i being so specific black women are known for being strong and when i grew up in a home where my sister was saying oh you don't you're not acting strong i was like you know maybe that's my problem Maybe right. that's a problem, trying to be strong. We're not supposed to be strong as far as the Lord is concerned. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. It's okay to be weak for the Lord because then you're going to be able to be strong. Now everybody tells me, wow, you're so strong. I got to give him all the credit because if you saw me while I'm praying, crying, <laughs> crying, clearing, you know, but I have this motto where I start with joy. I let myself go through, but I, I don't end, get off my knees until I get back to this joy place. You have to make it back there, but you don't skip the work. Does that make sense? Don't skip the work, yeah. right? And so as a mother and a woman that has to balance it all, find your quiet place. I started, I, in this COVID time, I said, it's time for me to get my war room. So I ended up getting a war corner. And my, my cat and my dog take over that okay. corner sometimes. But, but anyway, it's my corner where I can sit, and I'm like, if I don't force myself, it's like a woman's instinct. I won't. I have to sit and just pray and just breathe and journal. And I, I encourage women, if you do not put yourself on that calendar, you ain't going to put yourself, you're not going to be here, you know, and then mom's not going to be here for anybody if you're not here for yourself. My ministry is all about what you're saying. How does a woman balance it? That's what I'm here for is to help women find their calling hear the Lord, love themselves, balance yourself, life, um, life, um, work, life balance, family balance. I don't have it perfect, but that's my goal is to keep it in a good, in a good balance. And you know, one last thing, I was a Mary Kay consultant at one point and that really did, I have to say, I'm not trying to plug or anything, but I have to be honest, it really helped me as a woman because she believed in God first, family second, career third. The first time I ever heard that was from her and everything. I don't do, I don't sell it right now, but it, it just made an impact on me. I buy it for myself, you know, but I now use it. But I can't never, I, she, when I heard that, I was like, oh, I want this. And I've been trying to make sure I had that God first, family second, career third. And I'm like, I gotta do it. It took a while for me to learn that, but now I'm, I can honestly say I'm doing it. And I want to encourage people to strive for that, you know, because you will lose yourself. You will burn out. Wouldn't you agree? And so that's, that's, long answer. That's, and that's something that I had to learn myself, you know, being a young mom, being a young entrepreneur, um, trying to make sure that I was providing for my family, but also providing me for my family as well. Because sometimes, you know, in the, you know, luha of us being entrepreneurs and business owners and being so focused on what we want as well, that sometimes we forget about the family, we forget about ourselves. You know, we lose ourselves in everything. So it's definitely important for us to find that balance and find ourselves and get to know who we are so that we can be happy and make sure that everybody around us is happy as well. Mm -hmm. um, and like comments to an epiphany, like for me, I was like, you know, it has to be, you know, when you are going through those, um, those moments in life that really challenge you, it's like, wow, I don't even know if I can, you know, how am I going to bounce out of this? Or, you know, I know, you know, I have my faith, but, you know, let me like, you know, sometimes your mind just starts wondering you can't really kind of focus and you know figure it out but at the same time like you said you know look to god you know he will give you all the answers you know keep your faith um and stay dedicated to what it is that you're trying to do because you know he is going to equip you with everything that you need regardless that you think you don't have it and you don't have it so you know i've had to come to that <laughs> that moment in my life where it's like wow you know now I know what I, you know, I've been praying and I know that God has my back and I know that 
know, I can continue on to do this and I do have to push myself a little harder sometimes. And sometimes I do have to take these moments out and realize, you know, these little things. But, you know, balancing is everything when it comes to actually making your stamp on the world, you know, being, you know, important in the world, but also balancing, you know, you as well. Yeah. And we ourselves. <laughs> yeah, it is that that replenishing. You got to have that replenishing time. I have my me time Monday where I'm just like, you know, I'm turning it off. Sometimes I still end up doing a little something, something but I try to stay calm with this. I'm not letting somebody give me a deadline. Like, I don't want to have any deadlines. You know what I mean? Like, you can get a day where it's your, you do it at your pace kind of thing. Because some of us can't stop. Like, we just right. can't completely stop. But right. a me time Monday for me is like doing just things that I can do at my time, as long as I get it done, it went, you know? But you got to carve that in to replenish so you're fresh and you have that energy. And sometimes you'll have, and I want to be honest, you and I know, we have seasons where you just got to bust it. You know, you just got to get through and you can, you're not having as much time as you need, but you know it's a season. Now it's like, I had to do that for that month because, you know, as an actress and performer, sometimes things just could be one behind the other and you just got to get through and then I can get back. But you never fully lose yourself. You still got to carve out like, what, 10 minutes here, 20 minutes here. You have to because burnout's real. That's real. And it could really, it could really slow down what you've been trying to do. So you always stay prayerful, stay covered in, in the blood of Jesus, but it, you know, for those who believe and um, just let him, let him fill you because I believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when you've received Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in you and you should be asking for him to do his, what he's there to do. Fill you, comfort you, guide me, clear my mind, especially now with COVID-19 and all that's going on. We need to be asking for, it's there. It's like you're a millionaire. If you've received Jesus as your Holy Spirit, as your Lord and Savior for real, you got God living inside. You've got the power in you. You just have to say, stop for a second right. and say, okay, time out. Right. I need to be filled right now, Lord. I'm not seeing right. I'm not feeling right. I'm not, there's too much stuff. I just need a minute. And you got to take that minute. And as we get older, we realize, and as moms, we realize we got to do it. Sometimes in the morning, first thing, ask for it. Last thing in the morning, ask for it. Throughout the day, when you have those moments where somebody's trying to mess with the system, <laughs> you're like, in the back of your head, you're like, Lord. I just need one. I need a little, I need some energy right now for this one. You know, do it. <laughs> call on it. If there was any time to call on it, it's now. It's yours to call on. Don't do this alone. You, you were never supposed to do it alone. And it's right. okay to be weak in front of the Lord. You might not want to do it right here if you don't choose to, but you can be weak in front of the Lord. That's where your strength comes from. So I encourage, I encourage you to, you and any other woman and myself, First thing in the morning, and whenever you need it, it's there for you. And as women of color, we tend to try to be, oh, no, I can't, no. Right. Stop, go in the bathroom, right. take a deep breath and say, I can't, Lord. I, I, I'm not telling them I can't. They are never going to see you, right? But right. I'm going to you know, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know where to start. It's okay uh -huh. to just tell him, you're going to come out there and people, you'll have women saying, and I know you already know this, so I'm speaking to a choir. I have women saying, you're so strong. And I'm like, if they only knew. <laughs> like, what I was just doing this morning. <laughs> and, his, and, and I give him the glory. I'm like, it's the Lord in me. I tell him. Because maybe that's my time to minister. Because, I mean, I love that they see that. But I know what, I'm nothing without Christ. I know what I look like without him. So I'm not even going to front. You know, that's exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely agree with that. So we talked about um, women empowerment, your stance on that. We'll talk about your dancing career, um, your acting career. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with my audience um, while I have you here? I just love what you're doing, first of all, and you're just glowing, praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, there. Thank you got the talking the joy coming through. Um, well, that's a that's a if you will allow me, the most important thing to me is Jesus. So if you'll allow me to say what made us the most to my heart is to receive Jesus as your loving savior. If there was any time to do it, it's now. The world is just going crazy. And um, based on the Bible, this is considered like last days. And if that is true, and you're not sure where you're going to be, today is the day of salvation. And you know, all you have to do is is ask God for forgiveness of your sins, believe he died on the cross for you, and receive him in your heart to be a Lord and Savior. Simple as that. It's that free. And from that moment, God, the Holy Spirit lives in you. You just get your Holy Bible and grow. And then you can do the things we've been talking about because you have that power. What I want to make clear is 
I don't believe you can do the things we're talking about without Jesus. I really don't believe that in my heart. Now, others can say, what they, but I've been there, done that. And God willing, this is the year I'm turning 50. And I, I'm really seeing this as a sister that loves the women. I've been there, done that. I got lots of degrees, all this nice stuff. I can't do it without Christ. And I don't want to waste your time thinking you could do it without Christ. So today's the day of salvation. If there was any time to do it, now's the time. You could do it in secret. Don't tell anybody, but do it. So you can get this power we're talking about, the power we're pulling from, and you can go as far as God wants you to, right? You, yes. There's no stopping. And then even when we, we pass, we live forever, you know, with him. So it's just a win, win, win. Yeah, the enemy's gonna come after you, but the Bible says we are promised to be taken care of even when we're with our kids having hard times. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you and I'll always give you a way out. These are promises that are only to those who have received Jesus as a savior. So that is a loaded question. If you ask me that question, I gotta tell people that, you know, this is what I base everything I do on. And that if you're wondering how do I have this glow, if you ever saw my testimony and my, and my story, I've been through a lot and this is the Lord, all the Lord. Amen yes. and obedience. So thank you for letting me share that. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. I love to hear it. Again, like the purpose and my purpose is to continue to, you know, use my voice because I know, like you said, you know what it is not to have God in your life and you know what it is to have God in your life. So for me, I know what it is not to have a voice and to have a voice. So mm -hmm. when I found my voice and I found myself, I wanted to definitely use my voice and use my platform for what I could make it um, as, and that's co to connect more and more African American women, you know, regardless of what our interests are, um, what our careers are, you know, just to connect us, you know, together, because that's not <clears throat> a lot of unity. You know, we have unity in different organizations and different clubs and things like that. But my overall, whole overall thing is to, you know, have everyone unified. I know it's kind of like, that sounds, I feel no, kind of. We're on kinda, like, I see you, girl. You, you're <laughs> speaking my ministry. That's what this ministry is about for women. Keep it, please. Yes, I feel kind of girlish or kiddish or when I say that I just want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> a happy world or whatnot um and i think like people actually see that you know and what i'm doing um when i created this platform two years ago and yeah. honestly I did not know <clears throat> what the effect would be because you know for me coming from where i'm from you know we didn't have or i didn't have that much support in the community as far as being a woman being a young girl yeah. and you know someone who would um who would influence me, you know, to go harder and, you know, use my voice and stand for different things um, and be involved in the community heavily. Like, I didn't have those things around me. So I wanted to create this platform, my ministry, um, to be able to introduce it to other women who might need, you know, either, you know, motivation, empowerment, who might need some type of guidance in their business, mm -hmm. um, whatever they can find it and pull it from the platform from just meeting women not necessarily from myself but from other people a part of the network and that's what it's all about it's not about me it's about the people that I connect and a lot of the times you know I really don't realize just the, how powerful that is you know for women to be connect and actually feel each other's energy and get those positive vibes um and I continue you know to see that on a daily basis with this ministry and with this platform that I have like it gives me like so much joy, you know, at times I'm like, wow, I can't believe God assigned this to me. I cannot mm -hmm. believe, you know, I was one of those chosen ones. Like it gets you excited, you know, you want to wake up every day wanting to change. You want to get up every day putting positivity into the air and connecting with different people and educating and empowering and inspiring yourself as well as your family also. Yes, yes. This is, you know, my dance fitness program was all about that. And it still is this whole thing. But when I was in the same room as the women, mm -hmm. the Lord just put in my heart. And, and I hate to keep talking about Mary Kay, but I learned a lot about women from there, our weaknesses and our needs. And I was mm -hmm. able to take that with me. And I'm like, we're hurt. Hurt yeah. people hurt people. So when you're yeah. hurt, you're hurt, you know? And I was like, the Lord was showing me, you know, we have a nurturing side that's actually powerful. If we use it the right way, if we use our strengths as women to love on each other and, they, and just to respect one another, what a powerful thing. And I, what you're saying is reminding me of what I used to feel in those classes. I am right there with you. Our spirits are very are kindred in that. And that's what I believe. Being distant like this is not as easy to have that room thing, but I do it on 
flying it at like, you know, social media, but it's it's even more special when you see them in the same room, talking yes. to each other, supporting. Yes. It's just yes. so beautiful. And that you put them together and they're actually oh, that's so amazing. amazing. Like, oh, I do. And this came from the Lord. It's <laughs> it, you might think it's a little, but you know, the Bible says be like a child. That what you have, that glow, it's heavenly, it's of the Lord. And let people say something wrong with it. What would we do without the this heart, a heart of somebody who wants to bring women together and stuff? Where would the world be? <laughs> <laughs> so thank God for you and your ministry. <laughs> yes, thank you. I appreciate it. So if you could tell everyone, um, again, it was a pleasure speaking with you tonight. Um, you. you could tell everyone how to find you on social media, how they can connect with you, support you, um, and what do you have coming up next as well? Well, I hang out mostly on YouTube. So that's Patrice T. Evans, D with apostrophe Evans. I, my Instagram is Patricia Evans Official. Patricia Evans Official. And um, I do have a hair product line if you want to look into it. It's AyurvedaCurls.com. And I'm sure we can, you can always, you know, I'll give you all that information if you want to put it somewhere. Um, and um, man, I've been busy. Um, I have a play coming out, a cup of tea. Um, there's a lot that's shut down because of all this going on with COVID, but that's starting to come back up a lot of stuff. So I, I, I can't really say anything uh, right now, but now auditions are slowly starting to come back for actors. And I did shut down my dance thing, but I do a lot online now and I do virtual stuff. So in terms of in-person stuff, it's a little harder these days to do it. So, yeah. but, but I'm looking forward to when that time comes. The good news is as a belly dancer, I can kind of put a veil on and like, <laughs> yes. so, yes. so I might get give... <laughs> one, one most important thing on my YouTube channel I have four shows Sunday I, I talk about the Lord and right now I'm in Revelation which God just had me in and it's like whoa that makes sense and Tuesdays I show off my acting and dancing Thursdays we talk about hair and I'll be posting something tonight about hair and on Saturdays I have a live class at 11 a.m. where the, everyone can dance with me unlock this spirit their joy and body mind and spirit and all that it's just so much fun so i hope y'all come into my youtube channel and hang out with me all right awesome awesome i would definitely <clears throat> love to share that information those links um with everyone um so that they can get to know you a little better again like i said it was a pleasure you know speaking with you tonight <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. You're so beautiful. I'll be praying for your platform and ministry and keep yes. it, because this is just amazing. I just hope it grows so much to help more women. All right. Yes.